Hello and welcome once again everyone. Today's replay highlight features the tier 8 French destroyer Le Fantasque, which is really extraordinary and highlights how powerful French destroyers can be when played this well. There have been some nerfs to the tier 9 Mogador and tier 10 Kleber in the recent 0.9.0 update, but Le Fantasque has escaped relatively unscathed for now, so sit back and enjoy a real demonstration on how to play French destroyers in real style. As usual I've included the full build including captain skills after these amazing highlights with the timestamp here on screen for your convenience. But seriously, before you think about jumping ahead, this game is not to be missed. I'd like to give a very special shout out to Darth Henning who contacted me and shared this game with me. I've also included a link in the top right to my full playlist on French Destroyers and also at the end of the video. I hope you stick around and check some of them out. This map is called Sea of Fortune and starts off with our captain approaching the A point from the left side which has extended island cover in case of emergency. The enemy Kagero is spotted our captain instantly activates his reload booster and proceeds to pour on the fire with these five 139mm guns and combined with this reload booster the firepower is really quite devastating for enemy destroyers. The Kagero has turned tail and is desperately attempting to flee. Two sets of torpedoes incoming and our captain takes him out for the first blood achievement. He has got undetected, still some incoming high explosive. Captain does get set on fire, but he is undetected. He can instantly repair that fire without too much risk of being set on fire again. So he's just reversed back into the capture point. If you were wondering why the ship names and HP values aren't showing up, this replay is from a previous update where I was unable to record from the original version. A little unfortunate as the video quality is not as high as I would have wished, but the gameplay quality was so high I felt it would be a real shame if this game was not memorialised. The French destroyers have more a reputation for being speed demons rather than cap contesters, but with the removal of the enemy Kagero, our captain is taking immediate advantage by taking this point remaining patient and not firing to draw any unnecessary attention until the capture process is completed. So our captain opens fire on the turpets. Enemy Des Moines there in the distance would seem to be semi-stationary. So our captain swaps instantly to armor piercing. Des Moines is moving forward and has started to return fire. So our captain just slips in behind the island once, a, once again to break line of sight. There are enemy planes inbound. That turret is still advancing and is a prime target for our torpedoes. Drops two spreads on his predicted path. Instantly falls back in behind the cover of these islands once again. There are planes overhead. One of the major weaknesses of the French DD line is having very little AA defence. And Le Fantasque is no different. It only has a medium range defence of 3.5 kilometres, with no flak bursts whatsoever. So enemy carriers really can pose a potent threat. Three of those torpedoes connected on the enemy turpets. And our captain gets a devastating strike and secures his second kill of this game. These torpedoes are some of the fastest in the game, with a speed of 75 knots, and they hit quite hard, with a max damage of 18,400. Since 0.9.0, the detectability range has been increased to 1.8 kilometers, but with such a high speed, they remain a very dangerous weapon, especially against slower moving, less agile targets like battleships. With the removal of the enemy turpets there in close proximity, our captain now can push forward. 
One might be forgiven in thinking this is a tier 8 game, given our captain's first two victims. But that is Yamato and Montana on the horizon, and represent very juicy targets indeed for Le Fantasque. It's usually a very high risk manoeuvre, operating in open water with an audacious on the enemy team. If you are new to the game or unfamiliar with the French line, they have no smoke screens, but utilising one of the hallmarks of the French line, its great speed, our captain can quickly close the distance for an attack run. Le Fantasque, fully built for concealment, has a detection range of only 6.4 kilometers. Combined with a torpedo range of 8 kilometers, it gives one a window of 1600 meters to get in and out of position to be able to torpedo a target from concealment. There is a small bug with the replay here, as it would appear our captain was targeting the Montana, but make no mistake, all those torpedoes are aimed at the Yamato. Yamato has turned in slightly, and with these high speed torpedoes, he has no chance to turn away. First three all land on target, second three connect, and our captain gets his third kill of this game. And that was the tier 10 Yamato sent back to port. You might be wondering why has our captain now turned away? After that success with the Yamato, not chasing down this enemy Montana. Well, enemy Montana is in full retreat. He has given away his location by torpedoing that Yamato. The element of surprise is gone and that invites a strike from the enemy aircraft carrier. So to throw the enemy off balance and attempting to chase a Montana that is in full retreat, there is a very low chance of actually successfully landing torpedoes on a retreating target. So our captain has retreated back towards the A point with his sights set on this enemy Des Moines who is approaching the gap between these islands. Our captain is still undetected. This Des Moines is blissfully unaware of the incoming threat on his position. He is in a firefight at the moment with one of their friendly cruisers. Our captain is able to close the distance here at high speed. Enemy Des Moines still un unaware of the threat. Closes to almost point blank range. First set of torps away. Drops a second spread just to make sure. First spread is enough. Our captain gets his second devastating strike of this game. Despite being down a capture point, our captain's team has taken over a 100 point lead. They have a three ship lead. He sets his eyes on the next target, and that's a broadside Smolensk. He pops his reload booster and opens fire. First volley seemed to be landing short against the Citadel. The enemy Smolensk instantly smokes up. And normally this is a very dangerous target for a destroyer to be engaging with. But our captain is prepared. He gets another Citadel hit. He's already angled away and retreating at full speed. He's undetected. And our friendly carrier has taken out that Smolensk by dropping torpedoes in that smoke screen. Things have taken a turn for the worse, however, with our green team losing a Kremlin and Zhao in quick succession. The red team has once again taken the points lead, which can rapidly spiral out of control with a 2 to 1 capture point advantage. To add to his team's woes, he loses his Le Fantasque division buddy, who gets torpedoed by the enemy Audacious, which swings the pendulum further in favour of the enemy team. Our captain has already racked up over 140,000 damage and 4 kills in this game. But it's our captain's decision making in this game so far 
is what really impresses me, and I can't stress enough how important it is for budding destroyer players to sit up and take note. It's the little things done well and consistently that will continue to improve your performance in the long run. What we've witnessed so far, little things like using island cover effectively, redeploying rapidly to keep the enemy guessing, and maintaining the element of surprise to be able to carry out such devastating attacks. Now it's our captain's decision to focus the objectives. Incoming dive bombers, so our captain immediately veers away. There was a Shimakaze spotted out wide on the J-line moments ago, but moving out wide to engage him would be counterproductive as the constant points loss from the capture points would outweigh anything gained from removing the Shimakaze. Plus, our captain would be dragged massively out of his position, betraying his location, leaving him extremely vulnerable in open water. Enemy Montana is spotted. He would seem to be taking a route in between those islands. Friendly Carrier is harassing the Shimakaze, who is smoked up. Montana gets undetected. And the Carrier was spotted behind those islands at the sea point. Taking a direct route here could be suicidal. With that Montana inbound, any direct assault through the sea point will bring our captain potentially under fire from both the battleship and carrier. So our captain decides to maintain his element of surprise and use his high speed to flank wide around the island and potentially catch the audacious off guard. The carrier is by far the biggest threat, making it the priority target at this point. Going behind the island has the added advantage of not only putting the island between the Montana and himself, denying him line of fire, is that it will allow our captain to draw dangerously close to the audacious without alerting him. The enemy Shimakaze has taken out our cur first. Despite being spotted by the carrier, that draws the team's level on ships, but still behind on capture points, and now over 300 points down on the scoreboard. Let's hope our captain's decision not to engage that Shima earlier doesn't come back to haunt him. Drawing ever closer to our target now. Returning dive bombers from the audacious spotted. Carrier is still in the same location, he is still unaware of the incoming threat. He does have visors up, however. Our captain does get spotted. Our captain instantly activates his AA. Only short range defense, up to 3.5 kilometers. They are in range once again. The carrier is already on the move. Have to note at this point, the carrier captain reacted very quickly here. But there is no escape for him now. First spread away. The carrier secondaries instantly set a double fire. Incoming planes set another fire, which our captain instantly repairs. Launches that second spread. Pulls wide so he can gain access to that audacious citadel. And with the double citadel, our captain takes out the enemy audacious, gets the Kraken Unleashed award. Last remaining wave of attack aircraft coming in, our captain quickly turns into that attack and avoids any damage. And with that the major threat of the carrier has been removed. Enemy Wooster spotted there in the distance. He is under attack from our carrier's dive bombers. He is frantically manoeuvring there. Our captain changes to high explosive as he is angled. Continues to cap this point and he can fire from concealment using this island to block line of sight. In taking out that audacious, our captain also picked up the confederate and high caliber awards. He manages to secure this capture point, 
all the while putting fire on this Wooster until he gets taken out by the Hakuryu. With that Wooster gone, there's still over 200 points in the difference. And the Shimakaze appears at close range. Our captain immediately activates his reload booster, starts pouring fire onto this Shimakaze, who has made a huge mistake. He actually stopped firing to get his torpedoes off. And this is going to be so close. And that is a world-class torpedo beat. Remaining calm and patient. Timing his turn exactly to avoid that torpedo. But the Shimakaze made a huge mistake here by stopping firing. He hoped to take out Le Fantasque with his torpedoes. To be fair, it was a very good drop. But to not fire his guns at that point it was a crucial error. With that kill on the Shima, our captain has further added to his tally. He's now up to 6 frags for this game. 218,000 damage. But this game is far from over. Enemy Montana is still quite healthy and is rapidly closing in on the position of our carrier and the North Carolina, which is quite low at this moment and they're using the cover of the island to stay alive for the moment. Our captain enters the B point that stops the points ticking towards the enemy team. 80 points behind now. Enemy Montana is denied vision. He's constantly under attack by our friendly carrier. Our captain is already receiving multiple compliments in the public chat. That's usually a pretty good sign you've been doing something right. And our captain has made a habit of doing basically everything right in this game so far. Enemy Montana is attempting to capture the A point. He has slowed down. There is a nice gap in between these islands where our captain can potentially torp from concealment here. Puts one out in front of his predicted turn, one on his projected path. He completes his third solo cap of this game. And once again, using these islands, firing from concealment. Just the same. Gets two reset ribbons, changes to armor piercing to take advantage of that broadside. These torpedoes are looking spot on target. And with that, our captain gets his seventh kill of the game. Truly spectacular. A massive 250,000 damage and an incredible 4800 base XP. Before going to the complete ship build, I've added some links, including the Help Me Discord and my own personal Discord in the description below. Now on to the build. Starting off with the consumables, I always stress the importance of using premium to decrease the cooldown time of your damage control and add extra charges of reload booster and engine boost. Le Fantasque gets five ship upgrade slots. Starting off with Main Armaments Mod 1, Engine Boost Mod 1, Aiming Systems Mod 1, Propulsion Mod 2, and finally Concealment System Mod 1. Moving to the Captain skills, starting with Priority Target, Last Stand, Survivability Expert, and Concealment Expert for your first 10 points. A very strong 19 point captain will involve making the necessary sacrifices like having no adrenaline rush to include expert marksman, basic firing training and IFHG in the training order of your own choice. So let's take a look at what this build means for the ship's final stats. 
For survivability, Le Fantasque gets 21,300 hit points. Main artillery consists of 5x1 139mm guns, 2 in the front and 3 in the rear, with 13 kilometers in range, with a reload speed of 5.4 seconds, which is further enhanced by the reload booster. Le Fantasque gets a torpedo rating of 29, with 3x3 launchers, one on each side and one centrally mounted for use on either side, with 8 kilometers in range and a very fast speed of 75 knots, with a reload time of 90 seconds. Le Fantasque gets an AA defense rating of only 23, which includes no flak bursts and a medium range defense of only 3.5 kilometers. For maneuverability, Le Fantasque gets a max base speed of 42.7 knots, a turning circle of 690 meters, and a rudder shift time of only 4.3 seconds. Finally, Le Fantasque has a concealment rating of 93, meaning you will be surface detected at 6.4 kilometers and by aircraft at 3.3 kilometers. I'd like to thank you once again all for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more. Take a moment to check out some of my most recent videos and leave a comment below. And until the next time, keep sailing it like you stole it.